Skype. Uh, you want me? Okay. So you want me on Skype? Please, yeah, yeah. Yale, we're going to use Skype. You can watch the slides on GoToMeeting as Scott goes through them. But uh, there's something wrong with your audio at GoToMeeting, so Skype's going to be the better bet. Okay. Okay, everyone. Well, we uh, we live, and so um, in Africa, we've always got a few challenges, and uh, they do say that we are, are specialists in chaos management. We're very, very privileged this evening to have Dr. John Demartini online. And John is, uh, Dr. Demartini is actually in Botswana at the moment, so you've got to love uh, technology. So welcome, Dr. Demartini. It's fantastic to have you online. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for your patience on the technology. Yeah, no, we're going to, uh, obviously tonight uh, there was something uh, a little bit inconsistent with GoToMeeting in terms of John actually being able to speak through GoToMeeting, and so we are doing it through Skype. So just let us know if there's any challenges with regards to the audio or anything like that, and we will uh, do our best to, to, to rectify those challenges. So really from our side, it's absolutely wonderful again to have another Let's Talk Property brought to you, as you know, by Real Estate Investor Magazine, Private Property, uh, International Property Solutions, and, and Wealth Migrate. And the whole purpose is always to provide you with education so that you can make sophisticated decisions about your future. And really, for me, I thought uh, I've, I've seen uh, Dr. Demartini speak a number of times. I've actually done uh, done uh, some of his courses, and you know, he's a specialist in human behavior, and most importantly, maximizing the potential and awareness. And and really, that was the reason for for wanting to get him online. But before we get started, I wanted to make sure that you had all downloaded the the values book in terms of where it is. So there's the link. You were all sent an email today, so if you haven't uh, checked your emails or you didn't get uh, the text message that was also sent to remind you, there is the link now. You can still obviously go and download it as we speak, because I think it's very, very important that you do download this, because Dr. Demartini is going to be referring quite a lot to this uh, to this book and to this manual in terms of where we are. So while I'm uh, while I'm actually discussing it, and you will actually see as a chat, I did actually send you a link. So it should be really, really easy. If you just click on the link, you'll literally be able to, to download it. So I've sent it to you all again. If you just click on the link in the chat section. Now, just some rules of the game. Dr. Demartini has asked me that he's going to run through his material, and then we can do questions at the end so that we don't get caught up in terms of where we actually are and, and what is happening. Can I just have a quick, uh, just a quick uh, a check from everyone? Is the sound coming through clearly um, when Dr. Demartini talks? Dr. Demartini, would you mind just uh, giving us a little bit of a, just a, a quick intro in, from Botswana, just to make sure that the sound is coming clearly. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I am uh, looking forward to this hour, and uh, I'm thankful for you listening in. And thank you, Scott, for helping make this possible, and Jason for making the technology work. Uh, I look forward to this hour, and uh, hope you can hear me. I hope it's not too echoey. No, we, we're, we're actually spot on. So many, many people have come through and said that it's good, which is fantastic. And for those of you that, uh, that are having a few problems, don't stress. As always, we are recording it, and, and I can send you the recording. So I think without further ado, you know, it would, uh, it would be great to, to get started. And you know, I, I pulled up uh, Dr. Demartini's website here just to give some of you, I mean, just, just some interest and to see how many people are actually awake. You, you should know how to use the chat section, but if you don't, up in the right-hand corner, you can actually chat away. Could I just see a matter of interest, how many people have actually heard Dr. Demartini talk or have actually been on a course by Dr. Demartini? If you can just say course or yes or I'm awake or <laughs> something to that extent. And, uh, and while you're doing that, I just wanted to give you um, a rundown in terms of what, you know, what he is and, and where he's come from. I mean, he's considered to be one of the world's leading authorities on human behavior and personal development. He's the founder of the Demartini Institute, a private research and education organization with a curriculum of over 72 different courses covering a multitude of aspects in human development. He's trademarked methodologies, which are basically his uh, Demartini method and the Demartini valuation determination. And that's a culmination of 40 years. And one of the things that I've always found very impressive in terms of what you've done is that from what I've understood, you've taken multiple disciplines, including religion and philosophies and everything. And I'll, I'll let you get into that. But, you know, for me, 
I think it's the, one of the best things is, as you say, it's 40 years worth of work that's culminated. He travels for 360 days a year, and I'd just like to ask uh, John, as a matter of interest, what, what, what is it like living uh, 360 days of the year all over the world? I, I apparently, you live on that uh, on the on the world, though. Do you not the big boat? Well, my primary residence is the ship on the world, which circumnavigates the Earth. And uh, I always said that my, the universe is my playground, the world is my home. Every country is a room of the house, and every city is another platform to share my heart and soul. So, yes, I full-time travel. I never leave the house. It's the furthest house. I just move from room to room. <laughs> well, it's fantastic. I mean, John's produced or uh, written over 40 books, 29 different languages. He's produced over 60 CDs and DVD sets. And I think the most important thing that, that I like is that it's about balance. You know, there's a balance between financial, physical, mental, vocational, spiritual, family, and social. And so, you know, without further ado, I'd really like to now hand over to Dr. D. Martini. And we're going to actually run through, and hopefully now you guys have, have, and ladies have downloaded the, the workbook. And really, the, the very first slide, and hopefully, um, Dr. D. Martini, you can actually see the slides. Uh, with your 13 values that's come up. Are you, are you happy for me to, to, to go through them? And, and, and when you want me to just move on to the next slide, if you can just tell me and I can move on to the next one. Well, first, let me do a little introduction to why there's value determinants, if you don't mind. Yep, fantastic. Um, I have attempted to distill the greatest insights possible on assisting people in maximizing their human awareness and potential and to activating uh, their leadership, the natural born leadership that we all have, and to help them become inspired and make it support. And what I found is that one of the core key elements of maximizing potential is a thing called congruency. And congruency between the intentions and goals that we set and the highest values that we want our life by. In other words, every and whenever they set goals and intentions that are congruent and aligned, what's truly most important, what's highest on their values, what is truly the highest priority, they have the highest probability of achievement, the highest probability of fulfillment, and they end up becoming masters of their destiny, not victims of their history. So determining what the true highest values are is crucial. The study of values and worth is called axiology. And this is an, an ology that has been handed down through the ages that few people really explore, but those that do and the ones that understand what's really important to them, they have an advantage over people who don't. So what I did is I developed a value determination process based on what life demonstrates for a person more so than social idealisms that have been injected into their lives I think it should be. And so what I'd like to do is go through these value determinants of a person determine what's truly valuable in their life. Because so often we inject the values of others and social idealisms in our life and attempt to live by other people's uh, expectations and values, which then create cross currents and incongruencies and frustrations and um, resistance in our life. These value determinants are things that I found are the most authentic ways of determining what's important to you. So I'll go through them. There's 13 of them. There are others, but these are the 13 that I use primarily. And when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, um, I am interested in helping them determine what's most important. So the first of the value determinants, there's 13 of them. The first one is how you fill your space. So we can go to the first slide on how you fill your space. Um, I ask people to write down the three things that they fill their personal and professional space with, the common things that they fill their space with. Now, things that are really, 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 really important to you, really valuable to you, really priority to you, you keep near you, you keep proximal to you. But things that are really, really not important to you, you want away from you. So if something is given to you, it's not really important to you, and you think it's a real zero on your important list, you'll toss it in the trash, you'll get rid of it, you'll avoid it, you get away from it. But if it's really, really important to you, it'll keep near you. 
So I look at how people fill their space to determine what's really important to them. So I ask people, what are the three things that they fill their personal space or professional space with? So if you look at my personal space or professional space, and you go to my office, for instance, or even go to my hotel room, one thing you're going to find is you're going to end up finding books, you're going to find research material, you're going to see computers, because my highest value is researching and teaching. That's what I love doing. So my life demonstrates my values, and if you look at my space, you'll see it all over the place. It's really obvious what's important. So some people may have their children in their space. Some people may have clothes in their space. Some people may have um, their trophies in their space. But whatever you look at, what you fill your space with, it may be literature, books, it may be artwork. But whatever is important to your space, um, that's what you write. You write the three things that fill your space most. And you don't want to write down what you hope it will be or wish it would be or you think it should be or ought to be. You want to write down what it actually is. What, and be honest with yourself. What fills your personal space and professional space? And you want to look at what's common sense. Once I have those three answers, and I try to get as specific as possible, I go to the next question, which is question two. And this is, how do you spend your time? You always make time for things that are really, really, really important to you. I always make time for another talk, another presentation, another seminar. I always make time for research. I always make time for my travels. So if I look really at what's important in my life, I make time for it. And when somebody says, oh, I don't have time for what's important, they usually don't know what's important. They're usually injecting other people's values because what's really important, you make time for. I had a lady one time at a seminar that said, my children are the most important thing in my life. I said, well, if you, have, if you sleep eight hours a day and you're awake 16 hours a day, what is the most dominant thing you do for those 16 hours? Well, I, she says, well, I work 12 hours a day. And I said, and how often are you actually with your kids? Oh, about an hour to two hours a day. I said, well, you can tell me that their kids are most important, but from what we look at in your time, your, your work is more important. And she didn't want to face that. She wanted to write down what was ideal and what she fantasized instead of what her life was demonstrating. Your life demonstrates your values. And whatever is really, truly important to you, you find time for it. And you spend and fill your space with it. So that's the second one. And you want to write down not idealisms about what you wish it would be, but you want to look at what your life really, truly demonstrates. In those 16 hours, what do you really spend your time doing? And the three most dominant ones, that's what you write. Question number three is, how do you spend your energy and what energizes you? You always find energy for things that are important to you, and if you're doing it, spend your day doing it, you have more energy at the end of the day than when you started. So I always look at what energizes you. I can speak all day long and educate, teach. I can go from early in the morning to even early in the morning. I've been known to do seminars from 8 in the morning to 2 in the morning. So I have no problem. I always have energy for things that are important. But I'll drain myself doing things that are low in my value. So look at what you do that energizes you. It gives you more energy at the end than when you started. And what you always find in it for. And if you get to it, you're energized. Write those three things down. That's what you want to look for. And you'll find that these answers are very commonly repeated. The things you fill your time and space and energy with, uh, you'll find that sometimes are the same answers. This is a healthy sign. This is what you're looking for. The next question, number four, is how to your money. You make money and spend money on things that are important. If you look at the hierarchy of your values, it's also the hierarchy of your values when you spend money. You always find money for things that are highest on your values, and you that for things that are lower. It's interesting when I ask people by the thousands around the world, how many of you want to be financially independent? Most everybody put their hand up. And then when I ask how many are, most people put their hand up. And then when I explain to them that they're only going to be financially independent if they truly have a value on building wealth, and if they aren't, really having a value on it, they'll keep spending their money on things that are more important than wealth building. They'll buy consumables and depreciables instead of actually saving and investing their money. You really have to have a value on wealth building if you really want wealth. Because the higher your value is when it's investing. So I look at where do you spend your money? You spend clothes and on shoes and on spending travel, not spending savings and investment, and you don't 
have plenty of bad clothes and shoes and travel. Get where you spend your, what you always find money for and answer those questions. That gives you an insight about, again, what's valuable to you. The next question, five, is where to organize and order. I have a very high value of an education. I have extremely highly organized information and not and some people have a very highly organized social some a test some a high organized cooking kitchen others their social network and their cell phone but whatever's high on your values will be organized you'll tend to organize and order order the things that are really important to you so if you look carefully at what is really organized in your life you'll find out what's important to you and you don't want to lie to yourself saying, well, I can't find them a mess. You want to look at where you are organized, because the only reason you think you're a mess is because you're comparing where your order is compared to somebody else's, and you think that theirs is better than yours. If you look carefully, you have something that's organized. It may be your calendar of relationships. I know a guy the other day that had seven different girlfriends, and he had every one of them organized exactly when he was meeting them, how he was going to meet them, what he was going to do, and how he's going to figure out how to survive seven. Very interesting order. I can barely handle one, let alone seven for this guy. But that was his highest value, having girls. I think he was an international sex symbol. Number six on the question is what is it you're most disciplined, reliable, and focused? What is it that you are absolutely you are absolutely certain you do it? If you look very carefully, you'll find out that there's something you do, no matter what, nobody has to remind you or motivate you from the outside to do it. You want to identify what that is. Again, nobody has to inspire me to go and research or speak. And you put me in front of a group of people, and I'm, I'm like a wind-up doll. I'm ready to go. Same thing with research. Every moment I get, I'm on to I'm onto research, reading and researching away. Same thing for writing. And I love travel. So nobody ever has to remind me to do that. So look at where you're reliable and you're disciplined and you're focused and nobody has to remind you or motivate you to do it. Number seven is what do you think about most? What do you think about most about how you want your life to come true? So what is it dominates your thoughts about how you want your it's just evidence of coming true? The key is evidence of coming true. I dominate my thought on, on researching, writing, traveling, and teaching. I think about traveling the world and, and sharing and inspiring people, helping people live magnificent lives. I think about that constantly. Whatever it is you think about, that you bring about, that's what you're looking for. If you write down what you think about, but you never bring about, those are fantasies. But if you write down what you think about and you show evidence of it coming true, in my case, it's evidence of coming true. I'm constantly traveling and teaching. So I dominate my thought on it, it becomes reality. You want to look at what your thoughts are that are becoming things. The three things that you think about most, about how you want your life is coming true. Number eight is what is it you visualize on how you want your life is coming true? What do you visualize? I am visualizing myself standing in front of stadiums and speaking. I just got invited to speak to 20,000 people coming up here in, in, in uh, Utah. And I got another possible program coming up in another country in front of a large audience. I visualize myself speaking and traveling the world in every country on the face of the earth. I look at what do I visualize that's actually coming true. And that tells me what's valuable to me. You'll find that the answers on each of these may be repeated and duplicated. That's healthy. You find the same three answers repeatedly coming up. That's a sign that you really can put, you know what you're up to. You're clear about what your goal is. Next question is number nine. And that is, what do you talk to yourself about? What is your internal dialogue? What do you affirm to yourself inside your head? Inside my head, I have a language going on that I'm an international professional speaker trying to over the world to speak. I'm inspiring millions of people across the world. I love what I do. I do what I love. I'm a teacher. It's impossible for me not to fulfill my mission on earth because that's my destiny. You look at what you internally dialogue, what you speak yourself, most, how you want your life, it shows evidence of coming true. We all talk to ourselves. And I'm not talking about the negative self-talk, because those are actually compensations for setting up fantasies in your life. 
So I want to I want to look at what is it you talk about about how you want your life to show coming to life. Number ten is what is it you want to talk to other people about and externally converse with people about most. So when you're in settings, what do you keep bringing conversation to? You'll find out that if all of a sudden it's the same midnight and it's getting late, you're kind of yawning and you say, hey, it's time to go to bed. And all of a sudden somebody starts talking about something that's really valuable to you, you'll wait and you'll start talking. You'll go all night. What are you going to talk about? And if you meet somebody, you ask them about, so how's your investments or how's your family? Or you keep wanting to bring the engage the conversation to things that are important to you. So if you look carefully, you'll find out that whatever's highest on your value, you love to talk about. Find again that this is also what you talk to yourself about, what you visualize, what you also think about. They're really the same thing if you look carefully. Number 11's question is, what is it that inspires you? And what is common to the people who inspire me? Now, what inspired me is going to a new country. I'm in Botswana. I love it. It's an absolute inspiration to be in a new, new country and share with young people. Today I got to, to speak to uh, a company, and then I got to speak to uh, people at school, and tomorrow program. And I get to speak to new audiences with new ideas and share what this inspires me. And I get to research. When I got to research, this morning I got to research and look for new information and fill in the my puzzle piece on the technology of life, the principle of life. So researching and writing teams are, are valuable to me, and this is what inspires me. But you may find meeting people inspires you. Maybe going and speaking inspires you, or doing sport inspires you. But whatever inspires you, and whatever is common to people inspires you, uh, this is this is what you're looking for. Yesterday I had an amazing country and he gave me his books and as I started to read it last night this morning I was inspired by the opportunity to learn from a great mind here, a great scholar here. So you go look at what inspires you and you write the answers and you'll find that those are similar answers again. Number 12, what is it that you have that you consistently set, what are the goals that you set in other words? What's consistent goals that stand out in your life and have stood the test of time? And I think we've got a misspelling a few of these test of time, but it's still test of time. <laughs> and uh, if you want to look at what you set goals about that you're looking towards and you show evidence of them coming true. Not a goal that has no evidence, but the ones that show evidence coming true. I've had a goal to stand, stand in every country on the face of the earth. I've been to 99 countries now. I've spoken and done the breakthrough experience in 60 countries. And I've been blessed to speak in 87 of those countries. So I keep working. I didn't have to do a stand day by a group of penguins on Antarctica. I had five million penguins lined up along a beach, and I got to stand and do a presentation to them, just like so speak in Antarctica. So there's always something out there. If you set a goal and you look at how you accomplish it, you look at what stands out and what shows evidence. Three things that are the three most important goals that shows evidence are coming true. And the thirteenth question. Is what is it you love learning, studying, reading about, and listening to about most? If you look at there's some things, if you go to a bookstore, you keep beehive the same in a bookstore. Or you look at what you love learning about most. See, I love learning about a lot of things. I'm a poly. I've been studying 287 different disciplines over the years. I read and write and each one of these things. So I love learning. Anything to do with maximizing human beings or helping evolve consciousness on the planet, I'm interested in. So I love learning. But what is it you love? I can read lots of things, but I look at what it is. Anything allows me to help people maximize human potential, I'm going to devour it. So you look at what you love to read, learn, and study about most. And it may be something, in, maybe in sports, it may be something in socially, maybe politically, it may be something spiritually, maybe about yoga for all I know. Whatever it is, it, whatever is important to you, you love learning about it. Now, after I answer all three in each of these 13 questions, I have a total of 39 answers. Then what I do is I look and I see that there's a lot of repeating, either in the same form or something similar, like a synonym. Then what I do is I go back to the top of the list, and I then go to the first one on the list, and I, and I look at what I've written, and then I look at how many times it shows up down the list. So that one thing, let's say at my highest value of what I fill my space with is books. And then what I spend my time is on reading. 
and then I spend my energy, what energized me is studying. And then when I look at what I buy my buy with and spend my money on is books. And then I look at what I am organizing in my library. There's synonyms going through the whole thing. I looked at all 39 and I looked for repetitions. I looked for things that were synonyms or similar or really represent the same thing. And as I do, I cross them out all the way down and I count them up and I total them at the top one, the first one. Then I go to the second on the list and I do the same thing. I go through all the list and I cross out everywhere where there's a synonym, count them up and I put a total at the top again. And I do the third one and I go through and look for synonyms again and I count them up and I put the total up there. And I look for what was the thing that when I'm done, I look for the one that stands out the most, second most, third most, fourth most, fifth most value on the list. You'll find out some of them are repeated many times and others a little less. But the one that's repeated most, that stands out most frequent, this is your highest value. This will show up in almost every one of those 13 questions. It'll keep repeating. If you find out what that is that's highest on your values, second highest, third values, et cetera, four, you'll look at your hierarchy of values. And that hierarchy of values will dictate your destiny. It'll determine how you make decisions in the world. It'll determine what you see as opportunities in the world. And it'll determine what actions you take in the world. Because the hierarchy of your values dictates your destiny, and it dictates what decisions you make in life. And every decision you make is based on what will give you the greatest advantage over the disadvantage, greatest reward over risk at this moment in time. So if you look very carefully, and you look at what you determine on these 39 different criteria, you get a sense of what's really, really, really important in your life. Your life demonstrates it. And it may not be what you thought. It may not be what the social idealism say. It may not be what your parents hoped it would be. It may not be what anybody else expects. But what's it, it's important to you. And that's what I said on the secret. When the voice of the vision on the inside is louder and more profound than all opinions on the outside, you begin to master your life. What it matters is what's important to you. And what you, is you identify what this is by going through these priorities, and then you want to do is master the art of taking what's important to you and bringing that to the world. Now, everybody has got a unique set of values. No two people have the same. So what it is, the key is to go out and help other people fulfill what's important to them fulfilling what's important to you. This is the key to business success and achievement and leadership. You want to find out what's important to others, and you want to communicate what's important to you in terms of what's important to them. If you do that, and you help them get what they want, they help you get what you want, and boom, you've done a masterful life. So this is this concludes the 13 questions, and it gives you an idea of what is your priorities. And there's a booklet on my website. I'd like to get that booklet. Is it? I think you should have it already. A little booklet to go through and ask the questions and how to do that. And I assure you, by knowing what's really important to you, it gives you an insight. Because whenever you set goals, you want to make sure you set goals that are congruent and aligned with that highest value. That highest value is what the ancients called the telos. And the study of telos, the study of teleology, is a study of purpose. And whatever is most important is the most meaningful, most inspiring, most purposeful thing you can do. And you will never need to be motivated to do that. And once you find out what that is, and you set goals to fulfill that, and you prioritize your life and delegate everything else away, you get on and having an inspired life. Your vocation and vocations become the same. And you can't wait to get up in the morning and bring your services to the world. And I assure you, you're going to get rewarded much more vastly if you do. These 13 questions will give you a head start and give you an advantage over anyone that doesn't know these questions. So apply them. Make sure you're answering them honestly and integrally. And make sure you prioritize them. Look at what the priorities end up being. And then start organizing your life to that. And then anything you do, you want to ask the question, how is it open to fulfill that? Because anything that you see in the way and not on the way becomes baggage and makes you have resistance. And anything you see on the way, not in the way, becomes fuel and gives you persistence. So you want to make sure that you ask, whatever's happening in your life, how is it going to fulfill this highest value? If you do, nothing will stop you from doing the most extraordinary achievements in life. This is the key to a great, a great achievement. As I was reading that book of this great leader last night, I could see right away that this is what this man has done. He has clarity of what he wants to accomplish. He knows what his values are, and he goes and acts on those values. It's very humbling to see what you can accomplish when you do it. Conspiring. And by exemplification, the greatest thing we can do for other people, even our own children, is to live an inspired life, an authentic life, 
is congruent with what's most, most meaningful. If we live a meaningful and inspired life, we give permission for other people to do the same. So that basically concludes the 13 questions in the value determining process and how important values are in your life. And beware of injecting idealisms in your life. We're not here to subordinate to anyone. We're here to stand on the shoulders of leaders, of giants. We become a giant to the degree of our congruency. So may you organize your life and prioritize your life around what's truly most important to you. Delegate the lower priorities to other people. Give them jobs. Hire people according to what is really important to them and their values. And watch what happens in your life. You'll soar. And I mean, tell me, tell, tell me, John, from my side. I mean, it's uh, it's incredibly inspiring, and certainly uh, something I'll be doing this weekend in terms of the thirteen questions. I think it's absolutely excellent. I know, I know, a number of people have said with regards to the sound. I mean, I'd, um, please, if you can, just bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you could see a picture. I'm actually holding a speaker up so that the Skype sound is coming through more clearly, so that you can hear John uh, or Dr. Di Martini. You know, he is based in Botswana, and we are based in Africa. I always used to joke with people, I lived in London for nine years, and um, where you can either have the sunshine or the internet, but you can't have both. So, so just bear with us, and there are recordings, and it'll be a lot clearer on the recording if, if, anything, didn't, if it, anything didn't come through clearly. So, Dr. Martini, if you wouldn't mind, what I wanted to do was to, to take those 13 questions and, and, and the advice that you've just given us and go you know, into, into some, just some, some practical, 10 practical questions, basically. Now, the first one I think you've probably already answered in terms of what drives human behavior. Well, there's a, an ology, a discipline, which I mentioned called axiology. And axiology is the study of values and worth. And this is the driving force behind all human behavior. In Maslow's personality and motivation, he said that we have a set of priorities, a set of values, he called a Maslow's hierarchy that all people are here to fulfill. And once we fulfill these values, and Derek Denton, who I had the opportunity to spend six hours with, and um, he's a great scholar, one of the great leaders in the field, he wrote a book called Primitive, Primitive Emotions. And um, what he showed is that just besides thirst and hunger and reproduction, this is the three most basic primitive values we hold. Then comes shelter and clothing, and of course, some people have a higher value on clothing, but, you know. but then comes shelter, shelter and clothing. And then we come up the layers of values for each individual. And each person is unique. Each value system is completely different. And the higher of their values dictates their behavior. You, you know that I'm going to be spending my behavior researching, writing, traveling, and teaching. Those are my highest values. So whatever those highest values is what you're going to get out of yourself. So anytime you set a goal that's not congruent with your highest values, you're going to have internal anger, you're going to be aggressive to yourself, you're going to blame yourself, you're going to criticize yourself, you're going to feel depressed, because you're setting goals that are not congruent. But the second you set goals that are, you're going to shine. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to reach out, you're going to do something extraordinary. So your behavior is based on your values. This is the greatest driving force. So you want to know yourself. The Delta Oracles, Socrates wrote about it, Plato wrote about it. The Delta Oracle said, know thyself, be thyself, love thyself. Epistemology is the study of knowing, and knowing yourself is knowing your highest value because that's your identity. It's also your ontology, the study of your being and becoming and your existence. I just uh, did a presentation in Calgary with a philosopher and some quantum physicists, and we talked about ontology there. And ontology is the study of being, and when you're being true to yourself, you're living congruently with your highest values. So your epistemology and your ontology and your teleology, your purpose are all the same. When you live according to your highest values, all three of those, knowing yourself, being yourself, and loving yourself, like the Delta Oracle said, all come true. I love what I do. I love my life. I'm inspired by it. I know what my mission is. I know who I, my identity is because I know my highest values. This dictates your behavior. This is the secret of all human behavior. So knowing these 13 criteria and being really clear and doing them again and again to make sure will be worth your time, I promise you. Just some interest, um, Dr. Martini. How, how often should one be reviewing those 13 questions? Well, no less than quarterly. But I would do it at first, I'd do it two or three times and be honest with yourself and get feedback from the people around you who care about you most and let them give you honest feedback about what you really do. Uh, don't let them influence it necessarily, but give, allow them to give you feedback. 
And if all of a sudden you're lying to yourself, they'll probably confront it. Because, like I said, that lady thought that she had a high value on her family and her children, but we found out it was two hours a day, 12 hours of work. But she really had a high value on just having her own independence, not depending on a husband, having her own income, making her own decisions, and not being dependent on any guy. Because she'd been willing to the past for being a man. So she, she made, I'm not doing that again. I'm going to be independent. So she had a higher value on independence, but she had, number three, children. Number three on her values was children. When she finally looked at it, she had tears in her eyes because she was judging herself because she had an expectation to live like her mom did. But the truth is, she was her mom. And her mom had a husband that worked, and her mom raised the kids. So she was living by the vicariously through the shoulds and ought tos and imperatives. So any time you try to live outside your values and in somebody else's, you're going to hear yourself with an internal dialogue saying, I should be doing this. Why do I keep sabotaging? Why am I not staying focused? But if you set goals for doing your own, you say, you don't know, sit and off to some those two imperatives. You hear indicatives. You have clear, focused, and you're confident. It's the greatest way to build confidence. That's the secret papers, your value system. Okay, so so if I was to take that and then and then move on basically, the next one that I know is, is, is particularly frustrating and, and you know I'm certainly one of those people that you know I absolutely love personal development I've been extremely involved in it since my teenage years reading books going on courses you know doing numerous courses reading more books etc etc but if I was to ask you the one way to succeed because I know a lot of people get caught in this in this paralysis of you know they read a book they go on a course they, they attend a webinar or a seminar they hear it, but they don't do it. You know, what would be your advice in terms of actually succeeding in terms of the, the, the journey on personal development? Well, you're probably going to think I'm a recorder. I say this. Every every year on New Year's, I get asked on radio and television in every country I go to that week that I'm traveling in each country. I do radio and television a lot. So I get asked, you know, about New Year's just and people live in a fantasy about New Year's resolution. They, I always tell people every year that if it's really important to you, you're really doing it. So the idea that you're going to do this miraculous change on December 31st, um, and I went and I looked at the common change that people always wanted, and I found out the two most common changes they wanted is to not eat so damn much and to uh, save their money and make money. And this is part because for the last two weeks, Christmas holidays, they've been picking out, they've been pulling their taxes. So they have to there, so the chip really becomes a high. But once it's back at the beginning of the year, it fades within a few days, and they wonder why they keep going back to their old pattern. Because the hierarchy of your values dictates your destiny. So anytime you set a goal that is not congruent with your highest values, you're automatically setting yourself up for the ABCDs of negativity. You're setting yourself up for confidence, because you're not likely to do it. Because you're going to procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate unless you're setting goals that are congruent. So the key in personal success, if you want to call it that, uh, achievement, is setting goals that are congruent. It's the same answer. That's why I specialize in the most important. I have something here, 40 almost one years of personal development teaching. I'm telling you, this is the key. I've been studying over 29,500 books, all related to developing human beings. This is the key, what I'm giving you. You can sit there and try to use gimmicks, all kind of little gimmicks that people try to do to get themselves motivated. I have no interest. I always say that if you're wanting to be motivated, you haven't found what's important to you. Look to motivate. You need to be motivated for years. If you're going to be a motivational seminar to get you pumped up, that's because you're inspired by what you're doing. And you're setting goals that aren't yours. And you're striving for that which is not obtainable, which is something that's not meaningful. The wise thing to do is to set goals that are yours and to set them in a way that are strategically prioritized and broken down into small enough bites and you get into act going. So you set goals that are truly inspiring to you, meaningful to you, according to your highest values. You make sure they're not fantasies, they're not one-sided ideas. And you make strategically break down these goals into small enough bites to get to the time and space horizons that you live in. Because anybody, the more congruent you are, the greater the space and time horizon you give yourself. And you expand yourself. And then once you set goals that are more congruent, 
you're facing time horizons eventually lead beyond your life. And you start setting goals that leave legacies. You start creating foundations and institutions that live beyond your life. But if you're not setting goals that are congruent, you'll tend to look at immediate gratification and immediate gratification and addictive behavior compensation for unfulfilled highest values. And you'll shrink and you'll end up shrinking your shrink. Because you're looking for a quick fix. You're a speculator investing instead of investing. A speculator. You're a gambler instead of a, a keever. So the key is to set goals that are really truly incorporated in your highest values and that are aligned. So you don't need to be reminded. You don't need to be motivated. You just do it. You are inspired from within to act. I'd rather set a goal that is inspiring than a bunch of, a bunch of goals that aren't. So if you want to achieve in personal development, you want to know your values, and you want to set goals that are congruent, and not subordinate to outside influences. So the second you subordinate to outer people that you think have something you don't, and you do have what you see in them is inside you, you check their values of your life, you confuse yourself, you cloud the clarity of your own purpose and mission, and you'll sit the outside motivation to get you to keep doing things that aren't important to you. So that's the key. Value of congruency between your, your goals and your values. Dr. Demartini, just quickly, Jason, um, are you, Jason, are you online as well? I am indeed. Could, could we, um, I, look, I've learned with Skype, if, uh, if, you, if you stop it and start it again, you generally get a better quality. Do you mind um, if we just try that? Um, it, it's the, the quality has, has just decreased just slightly. If you could please just, um, just cancel this call and recall me again, and then we can keep going. I'll do that right now. Give me two seconds. Thanks. Just for okay, uh, Jason. Now I think that's just got you. I don't think you've got. Oh, there you go. Okay. John, okay. coming? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Doctor Demartini, you back online there? I'm on again. Okay. Fantastic. I um I just wanted to uh, always uh you know the, the better quality we can get, the more value we can deliver so to people. So I mean the question that uh, you've actually alluded to it already. You know when you do these presentations around the world. And you ask how many people want to be financially independent, and they all put their hand in the air, and yet so few are. You know, again, what would be what would be your one single piece of advice if, if someone was to say how to create wealth? Well, you first have to have a value on it, because I've interviewed about 26 billionaires now, and I've also interviewed people that live in townships and impoverished. And there are different different values to these people. Uh, the, the key is, again, the values. That's why I keep harping on it. And there are three things that I found that were consistent in vastly fortunate individuals. And uh, unless these are on their value list, it's not likely to keep happening or uh, ever occur. Number one uh, uh, is that they feel that by divine providence and human sovereignty that they're dedicated and committed to serving vast numbers of people. If you don't have a calling and don't have a desire to serve vast numbers of people and find their needs, find their challenges, find their voids and fill them directly or indirectly through building a company or investing in a company or supporting somebody who's investing in a company. If you're not dedicated to fulfilling values and filling needs, you're pretty well living in a fantasy that you're going to be wealthy. But unless you're serving, there's no wealth. You have to serve people. I just spent about three hours at a college day talking about this, and it's so important. So the first thing is actually desiring to build a business that serves ever greater numbers of people. Because you have to have a desire for that. The second thing is you have to have a desire and have to have a value on refining and polishing and managing that business where it is efficient and effectively run to maximize profits. Because there's a lot of people that want to, are working in the business but not working on the business, and they're not efficiently running the business, and they're not maximizing profits, and so they're working their butt off, but there's nothing to show for it. And I know some people that work for 20 or 30 years and still have no, no, uh, no income, very little income. So you have to be able to not only have a dedication to serving people, you have to have a dedication to refining the business. The third thing is you have to have a dedication to saving a portion of those profits. If you keep waiting for extra profit to come in before you save it, it won't happen. The wealthy have always known to pay themselves first and to take and take the cream off the top, you might say, off the milk. 
You have to have a forced automatic savings in place to build up a liquid cushion of liquid money. One of the, the greatest things that you'll ever learn about wealth building is to make sure you have lots of capital. If you're going to be investing in stocks or you're going to be investing in real estate, key is capital, liquidity. A lot of people are speculators and taking an enormous risk without having the liquidity to be able to deal with the volatility. This is foolish. They want to make sure that you save a progressive portion of profits until you have at least a few months worth of liquidity to stabilize your primary business before you go out and invest and, and ta tackle greater degrees of, of volatilities and in investments, risk and rewards. The fourth thing that I want to add is that you want to then start investing. And you once you have your liquidity and you've got a nice cushion of, of cash, you can now start investing either in companies, which is great, or in real estate, which is great. But you need to know the numbers and you need to do your due diligence. And my advice is not to over speculate, but to make sure you understand the fundamentals, the true values of companies or properties, and make sure you're not a, a speculator cowboy riding a bronco. Make sure that you actually know and do your homework. If you really value wealth building, you'll study it. You'll study what you're going to invest in. You're not going to go haphazardly, go buy fads or what somebody tells you. You're going to go and invest in it and know what you're studying and know what you're investing in. And you want to invest in things that you know how and understand the mechanics of it. So you study it. I'd rather study it before I invest in it so I have an idea about it. The next thing is you want to have a value on accumulating wealth. Because if you don't, the second you start to get a little ahead, you'll start spending it again and raise your lifestyle. And this is where people kind of mess up. They keep raising their lifestyle the second they get their money that they never save. And so they're basically working their whole life for money as a slave instead of having money work for them and, and becoming its master. So you want to save it and invest it and accumulate it and let it earn the right through its own interest development and the capital gains. You want to earn the right to have a greater wealthy lifestyle. So, so, so many people raise their lifestyle before savings. But I have a rule. Never raise your lifestyle unless you're willing to raise the savings and taxes the same amount. That keeps you in check and makes you have a wealth that's really going to sustain. And the last thing, number six, is you want to make sure that you have a cause that leaves a legacy. You want to have some reason for building wealth that, that is a philanthropic cause that inspires you that leaves a legacy. In my case, it's the Demartini Prize, the Demartini Institute, the Demartini Foundation. The Demartini Prize is dedicated to building a vast fortune like the Nobel Prize to invest in incredible people that's done amazing things in the world. The foundation is dedicated to supporting that. And the Education Institute is dedicated for educating people across the world. So those are things that will keep me busy. No matter how much wealth I have, it's all going to that. Because I've got enough for my own life and for my lifestyle. This is for something that gives a legacy. It lives beyond my life. If you don't have a cause bigger than yourself, you probably won't get beyond yourself. When it comes to wealth, the greater the cause, the greater the wealth. So this all starts with your values. You have to have a value on wealth building. You have to appreciate what money represents. Money represents a means of having fair exchange to create sustainable service for the world. And the last thing is you have to have a value on building a greater life, a greater lifestyle, and raising the standards of life for yourself and the world that you live in. Your goal is to raise the standards of the people you live with, your community, your city, your state, your nation, your world. If you help raise the standards of them and you raise the standards of you through exemplification, you invest in inspiration, not rescue desperation. I'm a believer in philanthropy, but sometimes we confuse philanthropy, which is a lover of human beings, with rescuing desperation, and we actually enable people and stop them from becoming self-sufficient. I'm a believer in making people accountable and investing in inspiration. When you do, you build culture, and you build sustainability beyond your own life. Otherwise, you build a bunch of dependence. So those are some tips on creating wealth. But it all boils down to the value of building wealth in your value system. So you want to write down 200 benefits of building a business that serves every greater number of people. 200 benefits to yourself of maximizing the efficiency of that business to earn profits. 200 benefits of saving an ever progressive portion of profits. 200 benefits of investing in ever greater levels of leverage and risk. 200 benefits of accumulating a fortune and 200 benefits of creating a cause that leads to a legacy for wealth. If you do, you'll have a greater reason for building wealth in your life. And I assure you, once you have a big enough reason to do it, you'll do it. And those are six things you can do, 
And I added three more on top of the original three I was going to do. <laughs> and just in my interest, um, you know, us, uh, us South Africans sitting in South Africa, I mean, you've had the privilege of uh, standing on 99 countries, as you said. Um, you know, we've got a we've got a challenge with the rand and, and the devaluation of the rand, as you know about. You know, what would what would be your thoughts, just in terms of of creating wealth in, in comparison with the the whole purpose of of global wealth? You know, in terms of uh, global currencies, and you know, you've got more of a global view than most people on the planet. So I was just interested, considering most people online tonight are from South Africa. Well, one of the largest wealth uh, stores is the forex market currency market. A lot of wealth sitting in there. And a lot of people are investing in currencies and doing arbitrage um, and hedging their bets in the currency market. <clears throat> so it really doesn't matter what the currency does, in my opinion. <clears throat> I always say no matter what happens, if the market goes up or the market goes down, if the currency goes up or the currency goes down, if you value wealth, you'll study enough to know how to take advantage of whatever happens. <clears throat> So many people think, oh my God, the market's going up, that's good. And the market goes down, that's bad. These are people that don't know about investing. If all of a sudden the market goes up, that means you're paying more for stock. That's not good. But at the same time, the market, the previous purchases that you have, or the shares you have, have gone up. So that's good. So that means when it goes up, there's benefits and drawbacks. If it goes down, that's not bad. Now you can buy stock really cheap. You almost guarantee returns. I look forward to crashes. I keep a lot of liquidity and I wait. Every seven, ten years there's always a good crash. Man, I buy it all up. This is my favorite time. So it doesn't matter what the market does. A quality investor doesn't doesn't worry about the market. They know how to use the market to their advantage no matter what the market does. So if the currency's down, that means a whole lot of investors are coming in and they're going to actually buy stuff there in your country. So that's got benefits. When the currency goes, the cost goes up. That's got drawbacks. So I wouldn't let any of those things interfere with a long-term vision of wealth building. Wealth is not speculation. Wealth is knowing the fundamentals of, of the markets and about human behavior, which is about producing, and making sure that you go out and produce. If you produce, you grow wealth. So as far as globally, a wise investor looks globally and notices wherever there's spreads between different industries or different currencies, there's opportunity. So it doesn't matter. There's always opportunity to a wise investor. There's never a bad time, as far as I'm concerned. So they have to be able to educate themselves and become sophisticated enough and value wealth building enough to read it, learn it, study it, and mentor under it, and get advice from people where you're at a point where it has nothing to do. The outer world doesn't dictate your destiny. Your strategies dictate your destiny. I learned from a great teacher who started the International Association of Financial Planning in, in uh, Texas. He said that the people that are kind of a immediate gratifiers are quickly going to speculate and try to time the market, but the investors are the people that are in the market for time. And they're going to keep investing and they're going to keep building wealth and they're going to use every skill that they can to keep learning and use whatever happens in the market on a global level to their greatest advantage. So right now, I say that whenever there's challenge in the market, that's opportunity time. Whenever there's problems in a, in a society, that's opportunity time. I remember when I, in South Africa, a few years ago, I wrote an article that went into Star newspaper. It went to 49 different other mediums, and it said, should I stay or should I go? And this is when ESCOM was all of a sudden having a difficulty with making sure there's enough uh, energy for the country. And they were saying that the intelligentsia was leaving, everybody was leaving because they were not being able to do what they needed to do in the country. And I got on the air and on television, I said, listen, if they're intelligent, they wouldn't be leaving. They would know there's a problem, and where there's a problem, there's always people to make money to finding a solution. So entrepreneurs are looking for problems to solve. So I would say that whenever there's challenges in a society, that's the best time. That's when you have opportunity to build an entrepreneurial adventure. I know that Richard Branson gathers 20 people together at his place up in Necker Island on a regular basis. I was there at Christmas. And he gathers people together, and he gets the greatest minds together with them to find the greatest solutions and he gets investors to build new companies to find solutions to the world. He looks for problems to solve. That's why he's wealthy. Wealthy people are always well-being, that are congruent with their values, dedicated to finding solutions for humanity. That, I mean, that's, that's absolutely, it's absolutely amazing. And, I mean, it, it brings me on to the next one, which, again, you know, most people, I find, 
want things in life, and, and I think you probably explain this because they, they want it, but they don't actually go there, and they've got fear, and they've got frustration, and they've got procrastination. Is that very much to do, again, you know, in terms of answering your question here, that, that they actually want things that are against their values? Everybody lives by a set of priorities. And any time they're living congruently with their highest values, they're most inspired. And they'll embrace pain and pleasure in the pursuit of a great purpose. And they will endure whatever challenges that they're facing and see it as opportunity. But whenever they've injected the values of others into their life and attempted to be somebody they're not and live vicariously through others, as Emerson said, envy is ignorance and imitation is suicide. Whenever they try to live through other people's values, because of the unfulfillment they have, because of procrastination, hesitation, frustration they face, they look for a need of gratification to compensate for their unfulfillment. And addictive behavior is a, a compensation for unfulfilled highest values. As a result of it, they look for quick fix. They look for pleasure and try to avoid pain like an animal. They have the impulse and instinct to seek pleasure and avoid pain. This is the most unproductive state. they are automatons reacting unfulfilled in their life. As the Buddha says, the desire for that which is unobtainable and the desire to avoid that which is unavoidable is the source of human suffering. So when we are in an unfulfilled state, we live in fantasy and fear. Fear and phobia is a result of an addiction to a fantasy and a philia, as the Greeks used to say. So the second we set up unrealistic expectations on ourselves to live outside our values, we're going to live in fear. And fear is letting us know we're setting goals that aren't ours. And we're setting fantasies that are not true. And it's a feedback, not to be frightened of, but to be able to use to set real goals in real time that are really ours. And to set real, realistic strategies to obtain them. When we do, we dissolve the fear into fuel. And we take actions that achieve. I mean, I mean, which, which very much brings me on to the sixth question there. Sorry, Dr. Dimontini, I know that obviously we, we've, uh, we've reached the hour and we've had a few problems with the technical uh, issues. Are, are you okay for time that we can we can just answer a few more questions? Yes, I'll do another. I'll do another five or ten minutes. Okay, fantastic. So, I mean, basically, in terms of the obstacles, you know, that 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 very much is what you've just discussed. It's all about getting that congruency with with one's values, basically, in terms of actually how to get over obstacles and to get the breakthroughs. Well, I always say that obstacles are misperceptions because. Whenever you're living by your highest values, you see obstacles as opportunities. You see challenges as opportunities. You ask a new set of questions. How is whatever I'm experiencing serving me? How is whatever I'm experiencing helping me get what I'm going to go after in life? When you turn obstacles into opportunities, as Bucky Fuller, the mathematician, uh, he said, and he was an inventor, he said that pollution is future solution. I don't know if you're aware of this, but just last night, in my research, I found out that they just discovered and designed a new bacteria that is able to make biofuels out of waste products. Recently, they found another material. They found from oil slicks, there's a new bacteria that turns oil slicks into organic compound in fish food. So they're now designing these challenges that we once had over the last 20 years with plastic and, and PVC and oil slicks and stuff are now found to be solutions. We're now going to make billions of dollars using bacterial sprays on plastic to dissolve plastic in a matter of days, where it's now going to be turned into fertilizer to create biofuels to be able to run energy. So what was once a problem is a solution, and the smart people take those problems and look immediately for solutions and use their creativity. Because innovation, creativity, and genius is born out of challenge. And people who live by their highest values embrace challenge because they know that. So obstacles are opportunities to smart people. So if you get confronted by it, Norman Vincent Peale said many years ago, if you ever wake up without a problem, you better get on your hands and knees and pray for one quickly because you die. <laughs> you want to make sure you look for great problems. The greater the problem you solve, the greater the life you're going to live. Which, and the more problem you're going to have. And, and I mean, to be honest, you know, in terms of the next question, you, you did answer it when you, I think, in terms of when you were talking about creating wealth. But... You know, obviously a lot of people are concerned when, whenever they are investing, doesn't matter if it's the stock market or property or real estate or, or anything for that matter. And, and, you know, from what I understood from what you said, it really comes back to getting the knowledge and to doing the research. Is that right? Well, without a doubt, knowledge is your greatest uh, asset. Uh, specialized knowledge 
Uh, having a clear chief aim. Napoleon Hill used to say, having a clear chief aim and having gaining specialized knowledge is, is a great gift. But when it comes to investing, and I know that you're in property investing, uh, the key in property investing, as you know, is making sure you have liquidity to deal with the volatilities that you face. And so often, during the kind of the run when the market is going, is going up and capital gains are going like that, everybody starts to get bullish and they start to live in a fantasy and they start to think, oh my God, it's going to go up forever. You need to know what the real mean is, property value appreciation, and not live in a fantasy when it goes above it. Because in its normal cycle, it goes through an accelerator phase, and when it does, you start to forget that it goes through a decelerator phase. And when it does, it can catch you. So if you don't have the liquidity, and you don't make sure you buy quality property, and make sure that you really truly can handle the worst case scenarios and volatilities, you can end up speculating beyond your risk tolerance, and end up getting caught. And so I always say, when I bought property, I've, I've bought a lot of property over the years, and what I've done is I've always made sure that the worst case scenario, if all of a sudden I don't have renters, if all of a sudden I've got to pay everything, if I don't have the liquidity and I don't have the source of income to manage that, I'm speculating beyond what I can handle. And it's foolish, in my opinion. You need to be a smart investor. I learned from a, a gentleman that he runs a lot of property. He's got billions of dollars worth of property. And uh, he basically said, liquidity is the king. Cash is king. You make sure you have cash and don't live in manic states. Because mania can get you in trouble and it creates major depressions. But if you have to sell properties at a discount to get out, to get liquid, you probably overextended yourself and you speculated beyond your risk tolerance. Make sure that you have liquidity and be patient. Methodical and patient. I'd rather be the tortoise than the hare on this one. So make sure you have liquidity. Make sure you invest in properties that are sound. Make sure you know who you're going to bed with when you're doing partnerships. And make sure that you actually know what the mean is of the properties over long periods of time. And make sure you study what's going on in the environment. And make sure you really know all the people there that are investing. And make sure you don't go after something that's kind of too novel where the average person will buy. These are some basics in there. I could go for hours on this. No, no, hundred percent. I'm just, I'm very conscious of your time. And just, just for those of you who are interested, Clem Santa. Most of you in South Africa will know who Clem Santa, and I have actually worked on a system based on everything that uh, Dr. Di Martini is talking. It's about the research. It's about the knowledge. Uh, we've actually got a book coming out. And for those of you that are interested, we've actually got uh, two reports. One is on the five ways, the five things you need to know to create wealth through property. And the other one is the six things you need to know before you invest offshore, and you can actually go to our website. So, you know, I think, you know, coming back to what you said, it's, it's very much about the knowledge and, and getting the knowledge from the right people and so that you can make those educated and informed decisions. I wanted to ask you one thing, um, Dr. Martini, and I'm not sure if, you, if you've got any thoughts on it, but there's a massive trend at the moment in terms of crowdfunding, and I wanted to see if you had any uh, beliefs on that or any thoughts on that or whether... Um, you thought it was going to have an impact on the on what's happening globally. Oh, I love this one. Um, so many people today have these grandeur ideas about creating companies, and then they depend on vast um, raising of money. They're, they're, they're looking for people that are seed investors, or they're looking for crowd investing, and they are they got these great grand ideas. And that's fine. I'm all for it. Some of these stick, some of these companies become very big. But I always say that don't be afraid to go to the actual customer and be willing to start simple and make sure you have a proven track record with somebody and you're selling something that people want. Because I always say when you actually tap into what people's needs are, they're your greatest funders. The greatest funders are the people you serve. And if you serve them well, they're going to keep giving you money. Because sometimes we, we, we gamble on an idea without testing that idea, and then we go out and the banks aren't going to give us the money, so we go out and start looking for private investors or crowdfunding and dilute it away, and we give away our profits, and we give our control away. So I always say make sure you go and find out what the needs of the society are, and make sure you're really matching those needs before you go out there and look for large sums of money without even having something. Because otherwise you're going to make them gamble, you're going to gamble, and you're probably going to be speculating instead of actually investing in your own dreams. So I'm all for crowdfunding if it's necessary, but my personal feeling is I've always asked this question, and this is going to kind of blow some people's minds. I always ask, how can I get paid to start my company? 
how can I get paid to build a company? Instead of how do I borrow and how do I get investors? Just in case you haven't thought that, always ask that question too because you may be surprised. I've actually helped people start companies without any outside investors whatsoever. And people just go, how did you start that $25 million company in one year without an investor? I don't understand how you did that. We really narrowed down and got really clear about what we were going to sell, prioritized it down, got clear about who the market was, went to the market, pre-sold things at special discounts, and got people on board um, without having to put investment money into it and built something really from scratch with the people's money. So there was no debts, there was no borrowing, there was no nothing, except people were buying things. We did a game with discount up front, and we built a, a company from nothing. So always ask yourself, is there any way I could get my actual clients to fund this? Because your best investors are the people you serve. And that's the longest term, most sustainable thing, because some people today get way over their heads in crowded money, or they get it in, in indebted money, and make sure that if you borrow money or get investors, that you can always feel confident you can produce more than those costs. Otherwise, those people are going to run your life and eventually take you out. So make sure that you really know your business, make sure you know what their needs of the, the customer is, and make sure you're dedicated to the customer. If your heart and soul is not in the company, and there's no soul into the corporate body, it's going to die. Put your soul into it. Make sure you dedicate the service. They will buy in advance. I mean, I, 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 Tony Robbins did something quite interesting. I loved it. He said, how many of you would love to have a book on what I just mentioned today? And everybody put their hand up after he talked. He said, well, I'm going to do a book on it. And I'll tell you what, uh, if you want to buy the book now, I'll do it for one-third the price. And he got $10,000 just like that out of the crowd. And then he went out and produced the book. His gamble was he was now committed to do the book. But what happened is he already sold the book at more than the cost once he got it produced and actually launched a best-selling book by getting the people to buy it before he even started. So don't be afraid to sell and cut deals that way, but you better know and truly be committed to that goal. If you do, you'd be surprised what you can create. And you will also use crowdfunding. I'm not against any type of funding, but prioritize your funding based on the one that's going to cost you the least and what's going to produce the most. And make sure you can produce more than the cost. Well, before I finish with my very last question for you, Dr. Martini, I would say that if anyone's interested, just put crowdfunding into the chat thing, and uh, I can tell you about a way to be able to invest in some of the best property internationally um, through through the, this crowdfunding, working with some of the best partners in the world. So if you're interested, uh, let, let me know, and I can tell you about that. So the last two questions, and I'm, I'm going to run through them. It says, how do I take control of my life and my finances? And the second one, was the keys to a happy, healthy, and wealthy life. Tell us a bit about the breakthrough experience, because I think the last two questions are answered in terms of what the breakthrough experience is, in terms of what is actually happening. Well, the breakthrough experience, um, I agree, will help those last two questions. In fact, it will help all those questions you've asked. And, and uh, the breakthrough experience is a program I've done for 24 years, uh, actually before now, for 24 years, and um, it's my life. It's, it's a summary and a condensation of the highest priority principles and methods that I've been able to accumulate on helping people live magnificent inspired lives and help them live authentically and help them empower themselves in all areas. Because any area of your life you're not empowered and somebody's going to overpower you. So this, this two-day experience is where I get into people and I get deep into their lives and I say, all right, let's go. Let's find out what your values are. Let's find out what... Way. Let's find out what's in the way, and let's find out how to turn it into on the way, and let's find out how to set goals that are congruent, and let's how to find out how to own the trades of the great so we're not subordinating to anybody, so we're not clouding our clarity. Let's find out how to grow our self-worth and to learn how to invest wisely. Get, I, I go into whatever is necessary to that group, and each group and each week is different, to help them do whatever it is that they want to do in life. And I am absolutely certain, I've been doing it 43 year on average for the last 24 years. So I've done a thousand different, I've done this program a thousand times and to tens of thousands of people, literally hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm certain that it can make a difference in people's lives. So I love it. It's it's what it gives me an inspiration to get up and do every weekend. I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing than actually making a difference in people's lives. And this course is it. I, I introduced the value determination. 
I show up and make people do it. We get clear about it. I actually teach them the Demartini method on how to dissolve any emotion that's in the way and to dissolve any baggage that they've had in their life and help them literally how to get free of that and how to communicate values and how to have greater relationships, whether they be at home, with their children, or with their family, or with customers and, and employees. So there's a lot in this thing. It's packed. It's not a wishy-washy, rah-rah session. It's, it's highly intense, focused information on how to go and empower your life and live to, as it says, two inspiring days. It is. And it's where leadership. So it's a key on leadership. It's one of the most powerful programs I can do on leadership. And Dr. Dimartini, I mean, obviously, I, I know that you are extremely, uh, extremely busy, and uh, I will, I will take everyone else through how they can actually get involved in that. So, you know, I'm very conscious of your time here, and I really appreciate all the value that you've added for everyone. And if everyone can just stay online for a further five minutes, I will take them through the details of of uh, exactly what we've spoken about and a lot of the the to dos and the actions from what you've actually showed us. But just uh, one final thought from 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 your side, is there anything else that uh, you would like to share with, with the viewers before before we close you out? Yes. Um, give yourself permission to do something extraordinary. Give yourself permission to stand on the shoulders of great beings. Give yourself permission to live an authentic life, to exemplify what's possible. Don't subordinate to anyone. Don't try to live somebody else's life. Give yourself permission to be you. The most magnificent person you will ever be is you. And no fantasy will ever compete with the real you. Invest in yourself. Pay yourself first. And give yourself permission to go and be wealthy. And don't feel guilty about that. It means you've served. And you'll be able to be philanthropic and make a difference. And give yourself permission to be a leader. Because that's really what you dream about. Take the dreams that have been sitting there, living inside you, and bring them to the world. And don't let anybody on the face of the earth stop you, not even yourself. The greater your cause, the greater your life's going to be. So, Scott, thank you for the opportunity to share tonight. I look forward to seeing people at the Breakthrough Experience. It's coming up there in South Africa very shortly. I hope you give them the details of where and when, because... I can, I can, I'm sure that the people will benefit from this. They'll say thank you. I guarantee tears of gratitude going this program. Well, if and I, I wish to see the, the, the opportunity to share tonight. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being leaders of the next generation. And um, I hope to see you soon. Well, Dr. Diotino, on behalf of all of us in South Africa and everyone online, there's hundreds of messages coming through and saying thank you. And uh, we really do appreciate. We really appreciate the inspiration and the knowledge. And um, it's been wonderful hearing from you, and I look forward to personally seeing you at the breakthrough. But um, if everyone else could stay online, I will now give them the details. And uh, I know you've got uh, got other things too. So, Jason, and uh, Jason, thank you for helping on a technology point of view. And Dr. Martini, it's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, guys. So, just 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 for everyone else online, if you guys can uh, if you can cut that uh, the Skype session, what uh, this. Uh, there are, there are some uh, testimonials and stuff that uh, that uh, have come through from the Breakthrough Experience. It's apparently extremely, extremely... And to be honest, I, I've got no financial incentive or, or any motivation um, in terms of this. I actually signed up for this before I even managed to get uh, Dr. Martini. So for those of you who are interested, these are the actual details as to when uh, when the when the event actually is. Um, he's having it at the Sanson Convention Center from the 1st uh, and 2nd of June. And if you are interested, get hold of Louis Finn. Uh, so, Louis, you've got the details there, Louis Finn. You've got the number as well, and you've also got the email um, in terms of where you've got. So, what I'd like to do as well is just quickly take you through some of the little next steps in terms of who we are. You know, we put this together because for us, everything that Dr. Martini said, it's all about knowledge. You know, we've helped over 2,000 people invest internationally in property. We've got offices in South Africa, Australia, the UK, and America. We spend millions on research. You know, at the moment, I'm investing very heavily in America, and we've invested over 1.1 million in actual hard cash on going to America, finding the best partners on the ground, finding the best opportunities. With all the work that we've done with Clem Santa, we truly believe that the best opportunities globally at the moment are in America because of what is happening. But, I mean, I've extensively invested in South Africa, the UK, Australia, it's all about timing, it's all about research, it's all about having the best partners on the ground. 
and you know at the end of the day we've got all the associations and and the the memberships the certified residential specialist is the number one the, the highest qualification you can get internationally in property and the association of international property professionals is the number one organization worldwide that actually regulates that and we were the first company in the in South Africa to actually be part of that so you know if you are interested in taking what Dr. Demartini said and understanding and it's your values and creating wealth and creating global wealth is something you're interested in then really this is something that you should be looking at I would caution you though that over 80 percent of people that invest in South Africa actually end up regretting the properties that they invest in and over 80 percent of people that invest internationally actually lose money and so I would highly recommend that you go and get those two reports that I said on the five things you need to know about investing in property and the six things you need to know about investing offshore in terms of where you are. You know, Dr. Demartini has shared with you, and I always leave people with the, with the question, what are you going to do about it? You know, old, uh, old Einstein says, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is insanity. And to be honest, I've, I've been caught in a bit of that circle. And this very weekend, I've made a commitment, I'm going to go and do my 13 questions again. And I actually deal with a billionaire in Pretoria. And he always says a great saying, he says, you know, in any market that's rising, you know, anyone, even turkeys can fly in a hurricane. But my question is, you know, are you a turkey or are you getting the knowledge? Are you getting experienced? Are you, do you understand that the rand is devalued by 5.6% every single year for 22 years against the US dollar? And what impact is that having on you and your family in terms of where you are? You know, whether it's, you know, obviously Dr. Demartini, you know, is paid in US dollars. So our RAND purchasing power, unfortunately, is decreasing. And the cost, you know, whether it's a skiing holiday or Dr. Demartini's course or a property overseas or a lifestyle or anything, unfortunately for us, the, the, the case of procrastination is, is that our price is, is getting worse and worse in terms of the values. And this is why these things are so important in terms of you actually understanding them. So in terms of what to do next and what you can actually do, we basically go to their website. It's Dr. D, uh, drdmartini.com, um, huge amounts of resources. I would highly recommend actually going there and checking it out. The Breakthrough Experience, I've given you the, the details, info at drdmartini.co.za, and um, I will actually put that as a little post through at the end so that you can click on it if you would like. The third thing is go, go to our website. We've got uh, all the reports that I've spoken about. As I said, we're in the closing stages of finalizing that book with, uh, with Clem Santa using all his scenario planning technology to really help you have the most sophisticated model to be able to choose where the best place is to invest globally, and, and that includes South Africa. But all those reports are, are actually there. Then get hold of us. If you are interested tonight, you know, literally say contact. Uh, just write contact, and, and we'll get hold of you. We'll talk to you about uh, what we do. We, can, uh, we don't know too much about the, the, the breakthrough other than the fact I'm going to it. So please contact them with regards to that. But if you're interested in what we do in terms of property, international property, the UK, Australia, America, or anywhere for that matter, having invested in international property since, uh, since 1999 and having uh, invested in four different countries but investigated probably over 20, I do believe that we're probably more experienced than anyone else and certainly having helped over 2,000 people invest internationally in, in terms of offshore investment with a, with a number one player in terms of where the market is. And then the third thing is I just wanted to show you some pictures because, you know, Dr. Demartini and Clem Sunter and all the other professionals that we deal with, a lot of people actually want to see, touch, feel, come and get the knowledge. And I wanted to show you some, some just some quick pictures of the buying trips that we do in America. I mean, this is, uh, we do them uh, once a quarter. This was us in February. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of South Africans here in New York. It was minus 10 degrees, and uh, we went to New York. I believe New York's got fantastic opportunities at the moment. This was actually us in, uh, in uh, Phoenix, and you can probably see uh, this is Dr. Dolph DeRuis, the, uh, the writer of Real Estate Riches. You know, at the end of the day, I heard a classic thing from my life coach this morning. If you lie with fees, then you're going to pick them up. But at the end of the day, if you hang around and learn from people like Dr. Dolph DeRuis, Dr. D, you know, John D. Martini, and Clem Sunter, and uh, etc. And these were actually the auctions, and we went to the auctions in Phoenix. This was us having some fun and flying in a helicopter down into the Grand Canyon and going and having a, 
a little drink or a toast on the Colorado River at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I, one of my value systems is certainly that fun. And so when I go to do these experiences and to get the knowledge, we, we do have a lot of fun. This was, a, this was actually a show in Vegas, which I would highly recommend. If you think Sun City is, uh, is, is good, my wife and I went to Sun City, and when I came back, this was like a school play. This was, the, this was one of the investments, and this actually house behind was in Atlanta. This gentleman over here with a stripy shirt actually owns this house in Atlanta. This was another investment, uh, another time in February, and actually this gentleman over here owns this particular house. But you can see you're touching it, you're feeling it, you're on the ground. This is us walking around apartments in Orlando, touching, the, you know, understanding the market, getting the knowledge in terms of where you actually are. I mean, the numbers in America are phenomenal. Um, I mean, even this house, uh, this is actually a couple of months old now. You know, this house we bought for $86,000. I mean, it's, it's 250, 300 square meters under roof. You're getting a yield of 15%. But the thing for me that's most important is actually the replacement value. You know, you're buying a property at, at $100,000, $120,000. It would cost $200,000 to be able to actually replace. And I truly believe from all my research that property in America is actually 30% cheaper than property in South Africa, and yet you're getting double the return. And so, you know, it is certainly something, if you're interested in America and what we're doing there, just type in America and we can actually get hold of you. We go to America, we open up all the bank accounts. This is us in Wells Fargo with, uh, with all our clients and opening up bank accounts. And my good friend, uh, Yaku, actually uh, helped taught these bank managers on the right how to be efficient and actually get everything set up. But, you know, you get all your bank accounts set up. This is meeting the partners and having the debrief so that you completely understand who the partners are, how they provide a complete end-to-end -end solution in terms of buying the property, renovating the property, managing the property, and maintaining it. Because, you know, it's that whole saying, fair from your hood, no on your skada. It's a long way away from home. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. You are only as good as the quality of your partners on the ground. And, and this is, you get to meet them. You get to touch them. This is us actually having dinner with the accountant, the attorney, the management agent, the inspection agent. You need to meet the entire team. You cannot do this, and as Dr. Martini said, it's all about knowledge. It's all about investing in yourself and making sure that you're doing it right. This was another dinner in one of the other cities, meeting all the management partners. Very, very few people are so transparent, but the thing is we've got nothing to hide. We want you to learn. We want you to be educated so that you can make educated and informed decisions, but we also have lots of fun. This is in Memphis on a street called Beale Street. This is where Elvis is from. It's one of the best streets I've been to in a long time, and... Uh, we have a huge amount of fun with the live music and everything else. This was uh, in Atlanta, and this was actually my birthday. You can see me there, and this gentleman on the right sang me happy birthday. So you can see there's a huge amount that goes on. This actually was funny enough Halloween. So, you know, we, we, take, uh, we take clients over and, and we leave as friends. And this was us all dressed up for Halloween last year on a buyer's trip. And lastly, this was, was here, and he actually bought a property and, uh, in, in November, and he came to see the property. It was tenanted in January. And he came to meet. He was extremely impressed with the house. He was actually so impressed with the house and the tenant and the fact that he got $100 more than what they, what they expected. It doesn't always happen, but it happened that he ended up buying another two properties. And if you want uh, testimonials, go on YouTube. We filmed all the people that have been there with us. I'd really highly recommend go on YouTube, get the testimonials, listen to what people have got to say. Because at the end of the day, testimonials are everything. Or even better still, come with us. You know, and, but if you can't come with us, over 70% of our clients can't come with us. They're too busy. They're too committed. Their businesses are going too well. Over 70% of people actually invest. You know, we, we are their ears and eyes. So next Friday, I'm jumping on an airplane. I fly to America to go buy a whole lot more property. At the end of the day, this all started out because I was buying property, and my partners, Brendan and Ryan and Teresa and, and, uh, and Yaku and the whole team, we were buying properties ourselves. And people were like, well, how do you do it? So we started helping them. And then we started like they started saying, well, when are you going on the next trip? So then people started coming with us. So if you're interested in us buying properties for you, we, you basically give us a mandate. We your ears and eyes on the ground. We take photos, videos. We give you full feedback. And then you can actually make a, an educated and informed decision. So if you're interested in that, please uh, send uh, just write in the thing mandates. And again, we will come back to you and talk to you. But we are flying uh, next Friday uh, for two weeks to go and buy a whole lot more property in America. Because that opportunity in America, I've been in property a very long time, and I saw a wonderful opportunity in London at the back end of 2008 to the middle of 2009. But I haven't ever seen an opportunity as good as it, in, as, as it is in America at the moment. 
So really, just to re recap in terms of what, what you can do in terms of what next, go to Dr. Martini's website. There it is. Go to the Breakthrough. You know, go come at the Breakthrough Experience. I personally am going to it. I've wanted to go to it for years. Um, I'm, you know, I am booked on it. So, so go to that uh, that thing info at D Martini. Say that you came from the from the webinar, and um, and uh, and they will certainly be able to help you and, and and to be able to give you a good deal. You've got the books and reports. Get hold of us if you want us to call you. Just put in call if you're interested in the bias trip. Put in bias trip if you're interested in the mandate. Put in mandate. At the end of the day, we are here to serve. We are here to help. So. There are all our contact details. You can actually see where it is. As you know, on behalf of Real Estate Investor Magazine and Private Property and International Property Solutions and Wealth Migrate, International Property Solutions is our company that helps people invest directly in property. Wealth Migrate is our crowdfunding solution where we're buying property all over the world with multiple investors, multiple sophisticated investors, but allows us much more buying power. So if you're interested in in crowdfunding or wealth migrate or RPS, but really from, from Real Estate Investor Magazine, which is the, the number one publication in the country in terms of real estate and knowledge, I would highly recommend subscribing and going buying it, and private property, which to me is the best portal, it's the best access to information. You know, on behalf of all of us, it's been an honor and a privilege, and every month we're going to continue trying to get the best, both in South Africa and globally. So constantly watch the emails as to who I'm getting next month because we're lining people up all the time. So if anyone's got any questions, please fire them through. I know we had some questions for Dr. Martini. I do apologize about the sound. Unfortunately, there's not a hell of a lot I could have done. We did, um, we did have a, a test run at 5 o'clock. We had a test run at hopper 6, and then at 5 minutes to 7, the, his sound wouldn't work, and so we could only get on Skype. And so uh, hopefully the, the sound was, was as good as possible, and uh, considering he's in Botswana, I'm quite relieved that we actually got through it, but we have recorded everything as well. So anyone that wants to get hold of us, please get hold of us. If there are any questions, please fire questions through now. You've got, uh, you've got all our contact details there, our websites, you've got our telephone numbers, you've got Twitter, if you're interested in following us on Twitter. If you go, that's the YouTube account. I'll be uploading this video tonight. Hopefully the quality will be probably better on, on, on the recording because it's going straight into my computer. And then Facebook, we're going to keep you updated in terms of what's happening in the market. So let's see here quickly uh, what we've got in terms of questions. Uh, there's a lot of people saying, thank you, very inspiring. That's obviously for D <laughs> Dr. D. Martini. Uh, will you share the breakthrough seminar details on a mail? That's perfect, Yaku. That's a good idea. I will send a follow-up email. Please could you tell us where on the site to find the reports? I looked but can't find them. Okay, uh, they're right on the front page on the left-hand side, right next to the video. But I will send a link to the reports as well on the on the email. Um, Catherine said, "Thank you for the time to spend and make this." Uh, no, no, no worry, Catherine. I, I learned a huge amount myself, and uh, certainly uh, challenges me in terms of what uh, where I am. Everyone that's asked us to get hold of us, we will. I sent a request for you to contact me via the website regarding USA investments and how the link is possible with the green card. Uh, fantastic, Lani, we'll, we'll get hold of you. Um, thank you, Scott, we'd love to learn more about America. Perfect, uh, uh, Munera, we will we'll contact you. Uh, when is the next trip? Um, so we've got this one coming up now, next Friday, which is the first week of May. The next trip is in uh, the third week of July, so about the 20th of July. Don't, the, the, the dates are exact, I just can't remember them, but, but it's, I think it's like the 20th to the 28th of July. But uh, again, contact us or let us know and we'll, we'll give you the brochure. And then the final trip for the year is in October, around the 20th of October. And again, we are going over Halloween so that you can experience Halloween in America. And trust me, it's bloody good fun. Um, to everyone who said thank you, I really appreciate it. Uh, Stuart has said, you say that America has the best opportunities now. Is South Africa still a good place to invest in property deals? Stuart, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer, and it very much comes back to your values in terms of what uh, Dr. Martini has just said, and also what you're trying to achieve. One of the things that really is a concern for me, and I would highly recommend you, you watch a webinar, and I can even send you a link, is the five most dangerous trends affecting us South Africans at the moment. And one of them is currency devaluation. The RAND has devalued by 5.6% every single year for 22 years. If you'd invested in 1978 the exact same amount of money in South Africa 
and the exact same amount of money in Australia, today you would be 350% wealthier if you had invested in Australia and not South Africa. And that's including all the capital growth and the income. But I would also say at what level of sophistication are you? Because if you're starting out, it's much better to cut your teeth in South Africa. It's a local market. You understand it. You understand the risks. Um, I, I personally have a major issue with the fact that the tenancy laws are in favor of the, of the tenants. I'm sick and tired of kicking tenants out. I bought my last investment property in South Africa in 2010. And personally for me, I, I, I just don't like dealing in the fact where I as the landowner uh, are completely bullied in terms of what is happening. I like to deal in, in the places like America where the law is in my favor and if the person doesn't pay, within 21 days they evicted. So there's a lot of things. And, but you know, it all comes back to, to what works for you. And you know, as Clem Sunder says, it, it really is about your, your, um, your, your belief and, and in terms of the future. I would highly recommend going and watching our webinar on uh, where Clem Sunter and I went through all the scenario planning, both in South Africa and globally, and that will help you make much better decisions, Stuart, in terms of where you are. Brian said, how much capital do you need to invest in America? The minimum investment is $15,000, so about uh, roughly 150,000 Rand um, to get started. So. Brian, if you are interested, again, um, that, that's the minimum, but, uh, but if you've got that type of capital, one can get involved in America. Gary said, very informative. I appreciate it. And Paul said, thank you very much. Sophia said, much appreciated for giving your time. Uh, so believe in property, but so fearful at the age of 61. Completely understand where you're coming from, Sophia. And I think we've all learned some very hard lessons in terms of what happened uh, in the last couple of years through the crash. I know I certainly uh, made a lot of mistakes. And that's why I am spending so much time working with the people who've been around for a long time, like Dr. Dolph DeRus, like Dr. D. Martini, like Clem Sunter, and um, you know our, our guy Jane Painter in terms of where the brand is going. That's why we're writing book, these books. That's why we're putting these models together. That's why we've got the research documents. But the one piece of advice I would give you, Sophia, is that the biggest lesson I've learned through the global financial crisis, whether you're focusing on shares or property, if you focus on income, then you will not only survive, but you will thrive. My uncle is an extremely successful stockbroker, and he always says to me, invest in Coca-Cola. They always pay a dividend. And I believe it's exactly the same with property. Don't get caught up in capital growth, whether it's residential or commercial. Make sure that you, you've got the security of the income, and that's what gives you the peace of mind. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just speaking from personal experience in terms of where I actually am. Um, Annalina said that that is for sure. After SA, nothing can be <laughs> as bad elsewhere. Um, yeah, look, I love living here. I'm currently looking at the waves in Cape Town. I've watched one of the most magnificent sunsets in the world. I have absolutely no intention of leaving South Africa. I'm completely passionate about it, but I believe that it's very wise and very prudent to invest globally and to make sure that you, you grow in your global wealth so that you have a plan B, that you have peace of mind. And personally, I believe that if you don't have it, you're actually being detrimental and downright, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, you, you're being downright, you know, um, you're being irresponsible, basically, is the right word. You're being irresponsible for your future and your family if you've got all your ducks in one basket. And it's not about a South African thing. If you had all your money invested in American property in 2007, you'd be feeling like a class clown right now. So, you know, you've got to have diversification across asset classes, you've got to have diversification across countries. You've got to have diversification across currencies, and that is why it's so important. Stuart said, thanks for the feedback. I'll look at the download link, but please give, uh, give, uh, give to me again. Thanks again. We'll do certainly. Gunther said, it was awesome. Thanks a lot. My first webinar with you, and I'll definitely look at your website in more detail. I'd love to get involved in the U.S. and elsewhere as I'm concerned about South Africa. So Gunther, um, great, and uh, glad that you enjoyed it. And certainly I'll send some links that I think are of value. I'll certainly watch the webinar that, uh, that we did with Clem Sunter and also one of my business partners, Ryan, uh, just did a, did a webinar and, and we've also got all the videos on the extravaganza with our partners. And uh, Tulani said, uh, bond in the USA or only cash? Tulani, you can do both. Um, again, I've got a webinar on the uh, three ways to finance in America. I would just warn you, there is a class clown running around South Africa where they're buying properties for $40,000. They're selling them to you for $80,000. They're asking for a 50% deposit and then giving you 10-year financing at 8.2%. And if you haven't worked it out, 
they're using your money to pay and, and they're basically just selling you a completely overvalued property. So I'd highly recommend that you go and watch our webinar on financing and how you do it. But to let Tulani know, we are getting financing from the bank in America at between four and a half to six percent and you can fix it for between ten to thirty years. So if people are interested in that. Andre said if I find you if I find you investment clients, do you pay commission? Andre, please get hold of me. Um, we, we do have a, a very sophisticated affiliate program and uh, we'd always be happy to, to discuss it in terms of what we're doing. So if there are no further questions, I mean I do see that we've gone on a bit tonight. I really do value and appreciate everyone being online. I do look forward to seeing you at the Breakthrough Experience and if we can be of assistance in terms of helping you, you know, create global wealth and, and most importantly invest with confidence, then really, you know, get, get, get hold of us. Uh, Michelle, very kindly, Michelle is uh, one of my colleagues. She just told me that the buyer's trip is from the 19th of July to the 28th of July and the one in October is from the 18th of October to the 27th of October. So thank you very much on behalf of everyone here and the full IPS team. It's been fantastic to have everyone online tonight. To Dr. Di Martini, even in his absence, it was wonderful learning from him. It's always an experience and I'm really looking forward personally to going through to the breakthrough experience. I'm equally looking forward to going to America next week and buying a whole lot more great investment properties. And so if we can help you out and you want to take advantage of the greatest opportunity on the planet at the moment, and that's what Donald Trump believes, that's what uh, Warren Buffett has said, that is what uh, Clem Santa has said in terms of where one should invest globally in terms of property opportunities, then, then certainly get all of us with regards to America. So thank you. Good night. It's been an honor and a privilege. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Cheers.